boy, oh boy, we got a hot one today. You're gonna go through more emotions over the next few minutes than a gaming mouse should ever be allowed to put you through. One thing's for sure, it's not gonna be boring. This is the Razer Viper Mini Signature Edition. Perfect. All right, two things right off the rip. Number one, this mouse is a masterpiece. I mean that in a literal sense. The design is a work of art and it's packed with arguably the best mouse tech on the planet. And uh, two, this mouse costs $289.99 US dollars. Of course, we're gonna talk about why, but the first thing to acknowledge is that a wireless version of the Viper Mini is probably the most requested shape in the recent history of gaming mice, and there is no standard wireless version available alongside this release. According to Razer, it is in the works, it's on the roadmap, but there is no set date yet, so the wait continues for the Viper Mini Ultimate. And that's gonna piss some people off, because $289 is an absurd amount of money to spend on a gaming mouse, Mouse, and I don't really think anybody can argue that. It would be easy to say, oh, Razer's making us buy this first before they offer us a cheaper alternative, but that's not really the case because these are really difficult to produce and there's not gonna be that many units available at launch. Even with that crazy price point, I feel like these are still gonna be pretty difficult to get. Razer has announced plans to continue to produce these. This is not an isolated drop. People probably would have been upset too had they released a $149 version and then followed up with the signature a few months later. About the only way to ease the pain for everybody would be to release both at the same time. They didn't do that. That out of the way, this box is probably faux leather, but it's really nice, like so nice there could be a Rolex in here and not a gaming mouse. Inside we have a little signature edition engraved plaque. This one happens to say Bad Seed Tech, which of course makes me a huge shill. You also get your manual and your accessory folio that has a microfiber cloth, two alcohol pads, a set of grips, a set of PTFE mouse feet, and a set of glass skates. These are Gorilla Glass 3 skates in black, and Razer says they specifically went with three as opposed to one of the newer versions because this has a bigger emphasis on being scratch resistant rather than break resistant. As you'll probably be using your mouse on a pad far more frequently than dropping it on the ground, this makes sense to me. While I can't verify the durability claims, I did think that was interesting. The other thing we get included here is the controversial and often elusive Razer 4K dongle branded specifically for the signature edition. Now, I personally like this inclusion because it's the best tech that they make, but it does increase the price. There's also the idea that the kind of player that would invest in a mouse like this probably already has a 4K dongle. Now, luckily, demand for those remains pretty high, so you could easily sell that on the secondary market for retail, plus shipping. I don't advocate flipping. So it is a very complete package. The only thing I would have liked to see here is a standard small dongle included as it's a little cleaner as opposed to the extension if you're gonna travel with it. The mouse design itself is visually striking. It's gonna be an instant love it or hate it thing. I love it, I think it's gorgeous. It's such an open frame that it's not even really accurate to say it has holes. It's more of an exoskeleton. The stated weight is 49 grams and can confirm it weighs 49 grams, down from 61 from the original wired version. Part of that reduction comes from the fact that there is no chroma RGB on this version. The entire top shell and the triggers are magnesium alloy. Like the final mouse Starlight, the bottom plate and the front of the mouse are plastic, so it doesn't interfere with the wireless. It remains a right-hand symmetrical, so only left side buttons. The DPI button from the top of the OG Mini has been relocated to the underside of this mouse. That's an important note that feels more like a deletion if you're somebody who reassigns that top button. The internals represent the best Razer currently has to offer, with specs right in line with what we see on the Viper V2 Pro and the Death Adder V3, so we still have that Focus Pro 30K optical sensor and the Gen 3 Razer optical switches. I gotta say, whether it's the magnesium or the smaller frame, for me, this is the best sounding and feeling implementation of these switches yet. So it's almost exactly a one-for-one -one copy of the Viper Mini size and shape. The only difference I can find is the signature is nearly one millimeter shorter at the hump because where the very tip top of that hump would be, this has a hole instead of shelf. Outside of that, it feels practically identical in hand. Here's how it looks alongside the Starlight Small and the MZ1 Wireless, which has been my main mouse for quite a while now. The triggers have nearly the exact amount of side play that you would see on the wired version. No notable pre or post travel to speak of on my copy. Side buttons feel very good. I feel like they may stick out from the shell a bit less than the original. I do wish they stuck out 
out just a bit more like on the new full-size Viper. The scroll wheel is updated to a ridged all metal design. The encoder movement feels more premium than the wired model and it's got a nice light depress. The feet have also seen a redesign to four pill-shaped glides in the corners and one on the sensor versus the large front and rear glide on the wired. I don't personally prefer one setup over the other, but it is an important change. Despite the look, the design here is strong. No creaking, no flexing, no nothing. You can hear the scroll wheel moving if you shake it like rents do, but why? I went over this mouse hard, looking for any sign of a flaw. The only thing I could find on my copy where it isn't absolutely perfect is this little area right here where M1 sits about a half millimeter higher than M2. That's it. I know it's minor. It doesn't translate to anything on the trigger feel. It's just not 100% perfect, and I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't point it out. Because of this price tag, people are going to want this thing to be perfect. I'm actually pretty interested to watch other reviewers' coverage of this just to see if anybody found anything. Part of what makes this mouse so expensive is that it's difficult to Produce. According to Razer, it goes through an eight-step process, and they discard units for QC at any point in the process, so the yield isn't very high. My guess is that this will have considerably more demand than supply for some time. Real quick, if you're new here today and you like what you're seeing, please consider subscribing to the channel. We just started the road to 500,000 subscribers, and I'd really appreciate it. So luckily, I've been maining a smaller mouse lately, and I actually had a lot of fun in game with this. I'm using it in like a weird hybrid of fingertip and claw because it's so low, there's nowhere for me to rest my palm under the knuckles like on my MZ1. I just dropped a pretty beefy video on all the mice I currently like going into 2023, and this one is definitely going to stay on the desk for a while. Do I wish there was a full-size Viper version of this? Yeah. I do. Not really any surprises as far as the internals and the 4K performance. It's Razer's best tech and some of the best in the industry period, so it performs right up there with the Viper V2 Pro and the Dave because it's using all the same stuff. It is still using Synapse, of course, due to the dongle, and it comes prepared, so there's nothing finicky when you're trying to get it set up. It does come assigned to 1000 Hz pulling by default, though, so you'll need to go into Synapse and set it to either 2K or 4K pulling if you want. Like Razer's other 4K wireless, there's nothing here that supports 4K or 8K pulling running in wired mode because that would require an additional MCU in the mouse. And also of note, there's no profile storage on this mouse either. So how do you talk value here? Well, you don't. This isn't really an is it worth it kind of conversation. Nobody walks into a Ferrari dealership and considers the value. You just have the money for it and you want a Ferrari. That's what this feels like to me. I can't knock the design. I can't really knock the construction outside that one very minor thing. I can't knock the presentation and I can't knock the performance. And I should point out that it carries a three-year warranty versus Razer's standard two-year warranty that they cover on everything else. Don't get me wrong. It is wild that I'm holding a mouse that's around $100 more than a final mouse. Never thought I'd say that even though the Zound Koenig M2K still holds the record for most expensive gaming mouse. But this is an enthusiast level product. One of those things that if you want it and you have the means, you're probably gonna buy it. For most people out there, you're probably gonna go with a more affordable small frame mouse like a Lamzu Mini at $89.99, or you're gonna continue to wait for a more affordable version of this mouse. And I think that's what most people are gonna be pissed about. And it's totally fair to feel that way. It's been a really long wait. This is a first run of new tech for Razer, so I can only speak to the copy they sent out to me. But if they managed to nail the QC across the mass production, this is simply one hell of a gaming mouse. So this announces today, but the first sale drop for this is February 11th, and it will be exclusive to the Razer store. Kind of a good guy move from Razer to get reviews out well in advance, give you time to digest all the coverage, and make a buy decision well ahead of the on-sale date. If you want to check out that video I just dropped that goes into all the FPS mice I really like coming out of 22 and going into 23, you can do that right here. I do have a couple of really banger videos in the works right now. I don't want to give away too much today, but we're finally getting back in a good rhythm over here in 23. Looks like it's going to be wild. That's it for today. I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.